All right, so we're gonna do 20 minutes of yin now. Maybe you just finished the uh, 20 minutes of flow if you're doing recordings, that is. <clears throat> I wanna start in child's pose if you're not there yet. Just go down to child's pose, knees apart, toes touching, arms forwards down onto the ground. Let's just allow two more breaths in our child's pose here. All right, slowly coming up from that position. Uh, you're gonna swing your legs forwards in front of you. Grab any bolsters or blocks that you have that you might want for a yin. I'm gonna do reclining cobbler's pose. There's lots of different ways you can do this one, but I'm gonna start by just doing the upright version. So this is no blocks required, just sitting feet together, fold, fold forwards over your feet. Um, and then the version that I had intended to do with you was a laying down version. So you can do something like this if you have the props with you. Something that allows the spine to lay back. Maybe the head as well. And then the arms can just open up from there. So most of the holds today will be about two minutes long. You can maybe notice how your breath is slow in these yin poses. So if you just came from the flow class and your body's in that transition now of kind of slowing down the breath, notice how that feels. slowly come back up. You can also turn off of the blocks and just turn to your right side into fetal position. Um, however you want to get out of the pose is great. And then we're going to come into a deer pose, left leg forwards, right leg back. And we're going to do the first minute of this folding forwards like so. So you can just come over onto your elbows, over the left knee. And the target of stretch is the glute hip, the part that's kind of touching towards the floor of the left leg. Breathe in calmly through the nose. And breathe out for four, three, two, one. Breathe in. And breathe out five, four, three, two, and one. And let's lift up onto the palms and then lean back onto the hands behind us. 
So if you're confused, just take a peek at the video. We're just, instead of folding onto the elbows or palms forwards over the left leg, we're leaning back and the hands are behind the hips. Should be feeling the stretch more in the right side quadricep now, kind of like one leg, is, the right leg is doing reclining hero. If you don't feel that quite yet, you could accentuate the angle of that right leg and just kind of bring that foot underneath of the uh, leg a little bit more. Hmm. Let's try the opposite side. So let's grab that leg, just help it come out of the posture. Both legs are gonna be forward facing and we're gonna just swing over to the opposite side. So now the right leg makes its way into the floor. The left leg makes its way back behind you. And in that angle, we're gonna lean down over top of the right knee for deer pose. Relax the back of your neck, back of the shoulders. And go ahead, push your fingertips down to the floor, lift up and start to lean back. For that uh, kind of reclined version of deer pose, fingertips back, palms back behind you. Stretching out that left quadricep. Some people want to go back into the elbows here. That's good as well. You could use blocks behind you and kind of support yourself by leaning down onto those props or just stay up on the palms for the last 30 seconds. See if you can breathe with a relaxed belly, letting it expand upward softly. And settle down. One more breath like that. All right, let's um, push ourselves back forwards with the hands, swing both legs forwards in front of you. I'm just gonna take a peek at the time, see where we're at. Okay, I'm just gonna do just single legged forward fold, but we'll just do both legs at the same time because uh, it's a nice version that just saves us a little bit of time. Um, so you're going to bring the legs um, either straight forwards in front of you or wide. It's kind of a personal choice what you want to do. And then you're going to place the hands back behind you and just use them as a little bit of support to anchor into the forward fold. Now, if you're like me, this is kind of required for the first bit. Um, as the body starts to relax into the forward fold, some people can just lean right forwards onto their hands. But for me, this feels kind of tight in my low back. Um, so what I can do to avoid that, if I don't want to keep my hands behind me like this to stay in the forward fold, is I can just sit on a soft block. Oops, sorry about the noise if you heard the blocks clunking around. But I just take a soft block like this. And then I sit up on, the, on that, my butt. And then keeping my hands back behind me isn't so necessary anymore. I can feel that my body's more willingly staying in the forward fold because my pelvis is in a slight forward tilt. 
and then it's just easier to stay in the forward fold. Yeah, I don't know about you, but as I hold this pose, I can feel a little bit of stretch moving down to the soles of the feet, down the backs of the legs, all the way to the soles of the feet. Maybe you don't feel it there. Maybe there's some other awesome area that you're feeling it. Can you try to do a little scan of the body right now in the pose and see if it allows you to check in with where you're feeling it? Start to lift your spine up using the hands maybe uh, you can stay on your block if you if you want to uh, we're going to do a twist so to take the legs back to the center bend the right knee and then cross the leg to the outside edge of your uh, left ankle or shin option to bend both legs in this position so we can uh, kind of lean back bend the left knee and bring the ankle near our butt. So we're ending up in this position here. It's kind of like a double crossed leg position. And then you can wrap the arm around the leg and twist towards your right shoulder. You can look over the shoulder, kind of back behind you. I feel like breathing in the twist is so important. Gives the body a chance to navigate the twist in a way. The abdomen muscles are partly our twisting muscles. So when we exhale, we might feel like a stabilization effect of our twist, or sometimes like a little bit of a deepening, like it feels like it stabilizes and maybe twists just a little bit more. Also with the double leg cross position, I feel a little bit more stretch in my outer hips. It's not just a spine twist, it's like a little bit of a hip stretch, similar to square pose for me. One more breath in. And out, staying in the twist. And then travel back to the center, inhale. And cross both legs. Try it on the opposite side. You can tuck the uh, left ankle near the, or sorry, the right ankle near the left bum to start. And then you can go into the, the second part of the crossed legs. So the left leg is over top of the right leg and the right ankle is near the left bum. Now we're going to place the left hand beside our hip and then wrap the right arm around the leg and then start to rotate the spine. Rotating to the left side. Breathing in. Calmly breathing out.
Let's take one more breath. And on your inhale, come back to the middle. So you're untwisting the spine. Lean back with both hands a little bit so that you can eventually get those legs to uncross. And come into tabletop position, please. Once you're in tabletop, you're going to let your elbows down to the floor. So it still feels like you're in tabletop, but you're just on the elbows instead of the hands, elbows and forearms, hips staying where they are over top of the knees. That's a guesstimate. Then you're gonna let the arms extend a little bit more. If you have a bolster, you can bring it under the chest like this. Then um, come down onto that bolster with the chest and the heart. And maybe let the forehead rest on the floor too. And when this is melting hard. You can also do this with the arms back. If the shoulders are too tight, you can just bend the elbows a little bit. Let's shift back to child's pose. So let the hips just rest back towards your heels. There's no longer that um, same shape that you had that in the spine. Uh, the spine is more rounded now. And let's finish with Shavasana. So you can come up. Uh, you can take Shavasana or seated meditation. It's a personal choice for you. I'm just gonna sit. The hands rest onto your thighs. If you're sitting up like this, And close your eyes. Let your body feel a sense of balance wherever you're at, Shavasana or seated meditation. Try to equalize the feeling of the body across the yoga mat. Balance the spine over the hips if you're, sit if you're in seated meditation. your jaw and your teeth relax and your tongue. Like the whole palate of the mouth. Take a steady breath in. And out. Uh, if there's a gesture or a word or something that uh, signifies the end of your practice, 
know, signals the end of the practice and brings you to that conclusion that I welcome you to do that thing. I want to thank you so much for coming to class today, for stepping onto the yoga mat for uh, 20 minutes of yin, or maybe it was you did the 20 minutes of flow and the 20 minutes of yin. Nice job. <sighs> kind of a rainy day here in Salmon Arm. It felt good to start with a little bit of movement inside. I hope you have an awesome weekend ahead of you. And I'll see you on Sunday for Yin with some tunes. See you soon. <laughs>